Just drop Fuck. back on. It doesn't matter. I don't know if it's going to say. It won't save it. <laughs> doesn't matter. Just keep going anyway. Fuck. Damn. Sorry, everyone. My phone just cut out. It just cut out, no, man. No, no, no. Sick, I'm bro. so sorry. It just, just cut out. My phone just went blank, so it's hectic. Yeah. Mm. That's crazy, isn't it? Oh yeah. Oh, someone wants to join. Hold on, this. I'll, I'll wait. I'll get through these one. Oh, I got, I got one. Deb got me one like that. Yeah. A red one. Yeah. So yeah. There it is. Filler. That's the white line style. Yep. Filler. Here's another nice Stone Island jacket. Yeah, that's tough. That's mad. That's a really nice jacket. That's tough, that one. Yeah, it's nice when you... It's, it's a nice fitted jacket. Ah, so My other windbreaker. This is mad. This is... Um, Saint Laurent. Yeah, sick. That's old school. I mean, it's a, it's funny. It's a windbreaker, but it fetches about. I think it fetches about fifteen, eighteen hundred dollars. Easy, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, it's crazy. It's nice. It's it's a real nice material. Um, yeah. So pretty much, you know, that's pretty much it. AC2. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, Man. love me watches as well. I didn't bring all me watches, no. but. <laughs> That's one of me babies, me Hublo. That's nearly 50 grand there. Yeah, it's a beast. It's a rose Is gold. that the one I told you to wear? Yeah, the one you yeah, wore you in go, my you house. Yeah, you got to wear it, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's me Hublo. Yeah, yeah. Big bang. Sorry to everyone that uh, it's, it's um, As you can see. my phone cut out, everybody, but I'll go through the shoes again, you know. The back's hectic on that. I'll put it, have a look at that. A fractal freak on this one. But it's... Um, I think it's a uh, 24 carat, but it's rose gold. Sick. So it's a nice watch, man. Like I said, another 50 grand there. Yeah? That's okay. it's like amazing. Um, I got, I, I, yeah, I got a few like IWC, Bretlings, Rollies. Mad. So I love, I love me. Yeah, I like me shit, you know. I'll um, I'll go through all them. Now, what everyone wants to hear and stuff. Um, take a seat if you want. I'll do. I'll ask you some. Everyone wants to hear. What was the first, where, because I know already everything, but um, I remember ages ago when you were young and there, you met this dude that got you into funk and stuff like that, and that's how you first got introduced to graffiti. What, what, what uh, year well, the, roughly the was that? The story was, I grew up obviously in Tottenham, yeah, out on the, on the Albans line. Yeah. And I obviously got two older brothers, but my oldest brother, Hank, the guy that was pretty much his age, yeah. Now, which is you know getting on sixty, he was uh, back then the pioneer of the boogie funk disco at the clubs. He used to play. He was a pioneer of DJing back then, and um, what what it was, um, I hang around with his younger brother Tony Dimo. He was a master. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we used to knock around. Obviously, back then was everything was about street gangs and. You know, you know, you know, it was Sunny Boys, Broadway yeah, Boys, yeah, Oakley yeah. Wogs, Westside Sharp, Sharpies, you know, all that's Lebanese Tigers, you know, Newport Boys, it goes on, man. That's right, yeah. On. So what happened was we used to, back then I always put their nickname, my nickname was Grimo, after my surname. So I was known as Grimo, that's why you see me IG says Grimo. So I used to write Grimo everywhere, prior the graph era, you know, yeah, like yeah. The, the hip hop era, um, or pre breakdance era, as you call it. And what happened was, hang on, I'll fucking hang this up. Can't come wait. But what happened was, um, pretty <laughs> much, we used to write our names everywhere, yeah, just our nicknames, right, like whatever, it was like TRG, Toddy Row Gang, yeah, yeah. Fucking, but we'll link with other crew, uh, with other gangs. So what happened was John, John's his name was, who then obviously owned Central Station Records years down the track. But what happened was he, he we used to listen to the music always at his joint. He'd be playing all the funk and, the, and, the, and then I'd start to hear the early taste of the early rap, the Sugar Hills, the, the first shit that was sort of coming out. Yeah. Um, 
that cross between still disco, funk and rap started to come through. And what, basically what happened was, in the, he had them on beta. I mean, it was on beta, wasn't he, on VHS? Yeah, yeah. Tapes. Oh, yeah. So there was actually graffiti in the background. And he goes, oh, man, you should, um, we should do what they, like, what they doing, you know? Like, they, they used spray cans and write their signs around. So we didn't call it, like, tags. We didn't know tag exists, so we call it a sign. And I was intrigued as a kid, yeah? I was like, fuck, like, that was amazing, because I was, like, into art, man. And it sort of like stuck in my head, yeah? So I remember I went out and I was in with my brother, so I did a, a Grimo. But I remember those stars and like the crowns and the funny shit in the background on the early sort of, on those tags. And I remember the train stuff. But I sort of looked at it as more like um, signage. Yeah. I really looked at it as a sign, not so much as, as, as a piece, you know? Because I, I didn't know, it was, like I said, I didn't know it existed. So pretty much after that, we had a crack at it. And I, I actually did a Grimo in 82, and I was, it was fucking necked, but I didn't know what I was doing, but I remember those big stars. The stars were just as big as me fucking letters, you know what I mean? But I was all with one can, you know? Like I did just a, a, a blocky style, but it was all like jelly looking shape. And even when we did TRG, like, I did it like, because I was into, because we listened to, a lot of people listened to metal back then. Yeah. Punk, 100% punk scene was massive Yeah yeah so I was listening to Iron Maiden And all this other shit Back then And ACDC And I remember we did the um, TRG We did like the lightning On all of the In the like, middle the yeah style, You know So we did our Guernseys Around like that And then um, Yeah late 82 Into Late 82 I, I, I actually Tried Duke man And then like 82 into 83 I started to Paint a lot more um, lines were clean, man. Like there was nothing. There was no yeah, yeah. tags. No, there was no graph. What like, was graffiti as in like nicknames? You know, like, you'd see and, and bands. Like, people used to put bands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, like you know, the council write their names and like fucking Dazza for Shazza. Yeah, 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 know, yeah. Whatever yeah, it yeah. was. Yeah, yeah. Used to write shit like that, and there was a lot of anti. Political shit, you know? Heaps of political shit was paintbrushed everywhere. Yeah. You see that sort of stuff around. But yeah, so that's how it kicked off. And then we laid down the first... Me and my brother, actually. I was Grimo, then he was Gimo, then I, then I was Duke and Beast. Beast. That's the way, and, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, we did the first... We laid down the first pieces out west. And, you know, we did the first shit that, that, that tarnished the walls back then. And it was a few years of fucking around. And eventually, yeah, it come that... Breakdance movement, and then it, you know it all exploded. But yeah, Beat Street. It was pretty funny to get a to get to get a taste of the art form pre breakdance Beat Street, whatever you want to call it era. Um, to yeah, to go a few years prior to it. Yeah, I and do that's... something you didn't even know was really yeah. a, a a movement. I was more intrigued by what they'd done. Um, so yeah, man, it was a good. It was it was a bizarre way to get in into the art form pre yeah, pre yeah. that era. So they, I was just I was lucky. It was just a lucky break. Yeah, they've just raised there, there was a massive jailbreak piece in Ringwood in the eighties, obviously from the ACDC yeah, well, song you know, as when well. We, when, yeah. I, when we um like you know that era back then, we used to, you know, was cunts were riding pushies and that around everywhere. We used to have the old that my brother and my brothers had. The racer with the big fucking handlebars on the cunt. You know, that was every kind of cruise around. Yeah, like that. yeah. You know, the racers, mate. Yeah, yeah the with the big yeah, hangers. Yeah, yeah, the butterfly yeah, hangers. Yeah, That's yeah, old school, man. Yeah. And, and like, I had a, I had, a, I had the old drag store with the T-bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what we used to do then, we used to even jump on the old red, the Rattlers and the Blueys. And on the weekends, it was like, you didn't have to pay for a ticket. It was for free. Yeah. Actually, you know what? They might be our fucking pizzas, you know that. Oh, really? <laughs> it's probably way now. So, part. but that's how I got into it. Yeah. All that way. I'll show you these shoes again. Yeah, I'll show these shoes again because I'll, I'll the video no, fucked you, up. You go for it. I'll, I'll... Now, this is that. For the people, so sorry, but my phone just cut out. This is amazing. The leather on this is just absolutely insane. It's unbelievable. 
there's that ACG again. Just banging. I don't know if that's black or... That's uh, black. Uh, the gum sole. Look at the front of that. I just love how the sole... The sole's amazing. Niche, it is, size. 10 US. 10 US. There's the fat 90. The leather on these, the leather on these is insane. It's just like um, unbelievable. Hey, Danny, what's happening, man? We'll get the old schoolers, the original. Anything in thirteen? Nah. <laughs> nice try. All right, these. <clears throat> we'll get the mustard beaks out. These are. I've never seen these in my life, man. These are like. It's like a jacket. But yeah, I'm so sorry that um, that happened earlier, but I will show everything again. 100%. These Adidas collab. These are very rare. These are insane. These are worth a lot of money, apparently. All right. There's the Nintendos. Look at that. Look at that soul, man. It's like, come on. And they're releasing, re-releasing. Oh, mad. There you go. MX90 steady anniversary coming. Soon rumors. Re-releasing infrared and lasers. Boof. But there's these. These are like rumoured. This is the only pair, actually. So, cop that. Uh, <laughs> these, you would say, beasts. You know what I mean? I'm going to show the shop again downstairs. This is a B-dub. You would say... The material on these is, is uh, the material is insane, man. Like that, that suede, soft suede. You can't, you can't fuck with it. There's a couple more. These are the black ones of that, the, the MX ones that I showed before. My old school style. There's the zennias again. There's the pizzas too. Man. There's a couple of others here that might have. When, um, yeah, the Jordans, there you go. They're sick. I love Jordan 2s, man. They're insane. Like, they're unbelievable. And these beasts. These ones are always the the top of them remind me of the Air Max the eighty sevens. Yeah, how it is like that, don't yeah, you reckon? They're a, they're a nice chunky shoe. Like is that a, like a when they made these? Is that like a blend of, of an eighty seven and something yeah, else, I'm or sure. did they just yeah, use I'm that sure. as a, a? All I remember is it just yeah, like I, I, I a platform just, for yeah, it. Man. But they're just they're a nice premium as well. I love more premium stuff because of the softness huh. in the leather. Um. But that was pretty much, I think. Did you get these as well? Nah, not yet. Not again. The I'll ask, uh, if you don't mind, I'll ask a few more questions of yeah, the old yeah, school. Yeah, yeah, I'll let you take a seat and stuff. When did you start, um, when you start meeting the boys who eventually became, you know, the beastiest fucking crew um, in the western suburbs? You, you know what I mean? Well, originally I started the crew, me and my brother, yeah? Which we'll call DTG. It was Downtown Graffiti Crew. Sick. <laughs> that was our first crew, me and my brother started. I had Dimo in there. Our mate Rizzo, Sam. They weren't writers, yeah? They were just gay fucking... They are just ready yeah. to go, yeah. yeah. We just put them in. But it was pretty funny because you had... Even prior, man, like, how, how funny is this? You got... I was Grimo. Tony was Dimo. Ha. Well, Sav goes, I'm Rimo, because he's Rizzo. Yeah, yeah. Of course, have Rimo. And then my brother's like, what the fuck do I call myself? And he goes, I'll just take the R out, call myself Kimo. Kimo, yeah, yeah. 
So we had the emo boys, you know? Yeah. <laughs> which, which was pretty funny, but... Yeah, Downtown Graffiti was the first ship, first platform, the early stuff, 82s to 83. Um, 84, late 84, going 85, become City Crime Artist, yeah. CKO. Um, there was a couple of early dudes started with me, was Stocker, Discover, um... No, they, they were they were actually um, what's the other dude's name? But they were actually um, Chileans, man. Yeah, yeah, they were good dudes. And then I, then obviously I, I knew Dit from back in the days. I met little chunky Dit when he was a fat little kid. I always catch the bus to go to school. Yeah, I see this fat little kid wearing laces, hip hop laces. And I'm like, fuck, this car must be into graph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was, he was back then. He was rank, rank one. Yeah, you know, it was his early tag, rank one. Yeah, man. You know, it was rank one. I was, you know, there was other tags like tricky. I was tricky one as well. It was one of my tags. Yeah, beast. You know, beast was my brother, but that was some of the early stuff. But yeah, we started the crew, city crime artists, and um, you know, then come. You know, Tildy. Yeah. You know, we had a cross collab with FCB because I was... Yeah, yeah, they're from... FCB. Yeah, Newport and all them dudes. Yeah, yeah, Newport boys. Um, well, slash Newport FCB. Frantic City um, Bombers for people yeah, that Frantic don't... Yeah, um... Bombers. But even prior to that, you had like Came and Fate. Yes, they Came, were like yeah. DMS, DH. DMS was one of their early crews before pre-FCB. Um, there was other early writers I met. Well, when I was, I actually remember meeting when me and my brother were painting. Uh, we're doing a, a, a power station box. Kane box. just joined. There you go. <laughs> yeah. But a funny story even with Kane, man, was, you know, he actually put his tag on my on my station bench and we, yo, Duke, it's Kane, want to meet ya. Like that's how we that's how we met. Like he yeah was, yeah, and he knew all the boys. He got to meet all the boys up up the Snowden's line, you know, like Imposter, Dioxide, Surprise, you know, Ilka, Il. Um, fuck, there was a, there was a fair few more, man. But anyway, there was a posse of writers that were up, yeah. up the Snowden's line. All all pretty funny. Most of them were all wogs and that, you know. Yeah yeah, pros and. You know, a bit of everything, but yeah, I met um actually Brink was another one. But I remember meeting Brink and the Imposter when I was just young kids, man, and, and they were actually looking at me doing it before they started painting. And then years and then a year or two later actually they started writing and I hopped I was on a train, I was bombing and they were coming down the line, they see me in the car, a whole posse of like oh, the whole lot of them. Yeah. And they just ran in the car and they're like, fuck, it's Duke, you know? Like, they're like, man, I can't believe it's you. Like, you're the, the OG. Like, they're tripping out. Like, fuck, we, you're the shit that we looked at you yeah. know? <laughs> on the line, you know? So it was pretty funny, man, just to see all that, you know? Um, but then, as speaking like CKA, as a generation of uh, early FCB, like I said, like came, as I said before, you know, it was DHA, DMS, came fate. Yeah, another early crew prior FCB. Yeah. Um, then come like you know your crack ski, dose. Yeah, maniac, yeah. Maniac, the original maniac. Yes. Prior. The other, yeah. The other Doug. Doug was the original maniac. Uh, and Doug passed on maniac. Yeah, to hit. Yeah, yeah. He, he so told me one. Original OG maniac was was Doug. Yeah, there you go. Those dudes end up coming across and forming, jumping on board with CKA. Obviously, shit got hectic back then, you know, as we all knew. You know, crime, drugs. Yeah. You know, it took over a lot of fucking, it wiped out a lot of the young generation kids, you know, uh, which wasn't a good thing. Uh, it was pretty sad to see a lot of kids yeah. end up on that path, you know, but such is life. Life, man. yeah, yeah. Do? That's yeah. It's part of, part of um, society, I suppose. Um, but yeah, man, so that was it. We ran with that. We got up. The crew was based off mates. CK wasn't a crew about who's the best and 
you're a dope rider, or you're this. We never formed that crew like that. It was just like, you're a sick cunt, you're a good mate. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's all about friendship, not about you're a fucking dope rider. No, nah, fuck that shit. To me, it means nothing. It means... To me, it's like friendship is more important than than a fucking dude who can just paint. Mm. And I've got, I got nothing in common with the bloke. Yeah. So, yeah, that's one thing. And then as the crew rolled on, as you know, the next waves yeah, come yeah, through. Yeah. There was other boys. Don't really want to get into too many names for certain reasons, but not in a bad way, but... I'll keep yeah. them on the DL. Yeah. The people know who they are. <laughs> you know? The crew ran strong pretty much from that mid 80s all the way through to 2000s. Mm. You know, I've, you know, 20, 20, 20, 20 plus years of yeah. non stop action, you know? Yeah, that's it. So they repped, they repped it. You know, a lot of, lot, of, lot of the bigger crews from the other side, yes, they, I, I give them mad props. I give all, all the riders out there mad props. I wasn't really one who associated with many dudes. I, I like to stay low. I didn't want to be known by everyone. That was just me. I had reasons for it. Yeah. You know? Obviously, we hustle. We do shit. You know? We like to stay on the DL. I don't want everyone to know who I am, what I'm doing. It was just the way we, we, we rolled, you know? It was our lifestyle. Yeah. So, I grew up on a rough side. I come up rough and stayed rough. I'm not saying I'm a rough person now, but... Yeah, yeah. I've got my values, yeah. I respect the person. I respect um, their opinion. What, you know, um, my word's my bond, you know. What yeah, I say, see. I preach. I don't say I'm going to do this. I don't fucking do it. I do it. Because I believe, you know, you promise someone something, you should fulfill it. Um, that's what friends are, man. Yeah. We're all about helping each other. If, you know, if I see my mate succeed, I'm fucking proud of you, mate. Exactly, that's what I... It's not about jealousy. It's nah, jealousy. it's the worst. Jealousy is the worst, man. It doesn't matter. I make a roll up in a Lambo. I had a good mate of mine who'd come and see me in his Lambo. I was fucking happy for him. Good, luck. good on you, man. Like, fuck, you work uh, hard. That's you it. You it. It's good like what you've got here now. Yeah, you whatever, know what I mean? You know? It's like you didn't fucking just... You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like... It's for nothing. It's blood, know? sweat and you know? tears, you know? Exactly. So, what people don't realise, you know? It's all self-made. Exactly. I come from... My parents weren't wealthy. They worked in a factory. Typical, you know... Working class stuff. area, exactly. man. Yeah. It was a tough gig. But that's where I got my values. My old man worked 12-hour shift, seven days a week, come home, fucking see him for a few hours. He's in bed. Yeah. Same shit every day. Yeah, he didn't take us... I used to play soccer back then. He barely took us training. Well, he couldn't. He didn't even have a car back then. Yeah, yeah. He used to catch a train to go play sports, you know? So... You know, all those things you you experience, but also when you're fucked up in life, you value those people, like your parents, who did stick fat by you. With little they had, they give you fucking everything, you know? Yeah, that's right. As much as love and support. But what they had, they would give it to you, you know? So I think that's where, you know, you sort of... Shit like that wears off on you as you get older. Yeah, that's right. And now having your own kids and shit, those values are spread across to my kids, you know? Yeah, exactly, man. I, I like to give my kids what, what you know, if I, can, if I can give them what I can, I'll give them. But same token, yeah, it's respect. Mm. Um, earn it. Like, I'll give you what you want, but fuck, you show me, show me the same back. Yeah. You know? So it's not just one-way traffic, man. I don't like to spoil, whether it's spoil or not, whether you give them 10 bucks or a thousand bucks, or whatever yeah, the fuck yeah. it is, as long as they see the value of it, you know, and, and, and they appreciate everything they get, because I know there's a lot of people out there who are rough and tough, and I was in the same boat, I hope you, I hope you downfalls, and we've all been there. But that's it. That's what, made, that's what made you where you are today, man. You know, you become a better person, my, that's me, man, that's what I believe anyway. No, thank so, you. Thank you very much. It is man. And that's where we are today. You know, who's, who's to say I'll be one day, you know, fucking have a shop full of spray paint, you know? Exactly, yeah. It's a that's dream. Right. I yeah. we had our little fucking rack of paint and we racked fucking 30 cans of touch-ups. We'll have them in the corner. You're you know, right. And <laughs> yeah, you're right in that. Line. We'll pick them up, we'll shake them, and we'll put them back. We'll cherish fucking, like, a bag full of paint. And now you're, like, fucking, you know, you got got 100... 150,000 spray cans in your... Yeah, warehouse and stuff, yeah, man. And then, 
And it's you, know, it's, you sort of reflect on all that shit, you know? Man. Shit like that is... is um, you appreciate it. That's, that's what it is. You actually value it. Because you remember what it was like just to earn 10 cans, 5 cans, 50 cans, 100 cans, whatever it was. That little stash meant something. Yeah, that that's like it. like sentimental. So when I, I have shit like this, it, it, it reflects me back to my childhood coming up and you appreciate every little bit. That's why I, I respect the scene in the sense where I like to offer what I can by offering cheaper pay and supporting it and help drive the prices down and make things a lot better for everyone. I'm not saying I'm the... I, I'm just saying it was my little thing that I believe that the scene deserved. Yeah. Because we know how hard it was to buy shit at the rack shit. So those couldn't get certain cans. You know, there were certain cans, like especially we used to go to Lefler's, like Tuxins. We go rack a mad ass, a Hugo Boss suit, two and a half thousand dollars suit from David Jones. Go knock it. I used to take it to Carlton, Logon Street, knock it for eight hundred dollars to the um, to the boys down there. You know, and that eight hundred bucks was like I could go buy some cans I couldn't rack, like Tuxins and. Yeah, I can go rack the odd one here and there, but fuck, when you want mm, range, yeah, yeah. it's the only way you can get your hands on range, you know? So it was always, if you couldn't get it, you'll find something to fucking rack to be able to get that To shit. get stuff. So that's how it was back then. That's how it was. That's yeah. how it was. Yeah, that's we right. We hustled our ways always, man. You know what I was trying to find today? Remember the first time I met you in the 90s? A man to man with Dr. D. I yeah. won't say his real name, you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah, Dr. D yeah. and you came in, I was trying to, and you wrote on the... I was, you had food or something. You had you were eating something, man. Oh, you had the white paper, paper bag, and you'd done hospital tags for me and oh, that sick. Duke tags and everything. I had it framed. <laughs> I've still got it, but I couldn't find it. I wanted to bring it today to show it to spin your head out, yeah, like. That's good, yeah, I, that's why I, because I looked up there flat like out back that, then. Shit like that's just yeah, it's just like natural shit that happened. You know, it's like no pre stage shit. We all just it's funny how this whole thing. Like generates and circles and then, you know, like you're saying, you met me back then and then one day, here we are standing again together and yeah, yeah. You know, I wrote this shit on a bit of paper for him. And, see. and then we were seeing you at Sanity after that and you're like, man, what are you doing, wrecking CDs? Okay. He go, I just fucking unloaded the whole shitload of, that, of, yeah, of CDs right. and that. Yeah, I was I like five shattered, yeah, remember? Fucking 50 to 100 <laughs> CDs at a time. Fill bags up. Just be hustling CDs to dudes. You know, man, used to rack, oh, fuck, it's endless, man, suits, anything that was, that was a thing, like, we got onto, um, me and Little Dose and a few of us got onto, oh, the, he's uh, another one, I'll, I'll... we got onto, like, the European stuff, you know, everyone was racking traditional, like, country road and stuff like that, you know, sports craft, yeah, those sort of brands, but, man, like we went straight for the the money, yeah, the money, the yeah. money shot, you know. And in like places like Diamaru, you know, Diamaru was like heaven when that opened. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, you had Lacoste, and you go there, you got Lacoste boy, you got Zenia boy, yeah, fucking everything was sport. Yeah. It was like un unheard of shit, you know. Jag, oh, <laughs> they just oh, wrote Jag, remember? Yeah, huh? yeah. yeah <laughs> Frankie's freaking, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of but, you course, know, it was a good era, you know. It was an experimental era as well. And it's funny, like, you know, we can talk about kicks, you know. You know, that was a shit, like you're saying, the riders wore what we see today as an everyday wear, and it was part of our culture. It was like we, if you've seen dudes wearing 90s or whatever, the kick, you know, Air Force Ones, whatever, like with his puffer jacket, with his caribbee, or his bone jacket, it was like you knew he was a rider, man. We had a distinctive look, and that was us. Whereas, like, today, it's like every... This is fashion now. Yeah. What we wore as a rider thing is now fashion, you know? It's a culture. Like every cunt's buying it. Every cunt wears it. I'm not saying we created it. Obviously, we followed what we've seen in New York. Yeah, yeah. But it's funny how that shit's done a full circle. i will show this Timberland again for the people. And then I'll go down back downstairs. This is what he's talking about, look. Yeah, that was an old 90s you know. jacket. That was a, man, I racked so much shit in that jacket. Timberland, like you see the detail in the, in the buttons. Like Timberland was king, man. Like, the, oh, like, back then. Like, fuck. Yeah, Timberland boots and, and the old um, sailor shoes. Yeah. 
know. As like writers or, or heroin dealers. Sailors. You know what I mean? Like seriously, if you have a graffiti right oh, you sold smack. Yeah, if you're right. wearing timber, especially the boat shoes oh, and the so beat ups. Right. You know what I mean? It was sell later. That's right. It's right, and that's not. I'm not even making a joke. That's no, like real. It, up. Yeah, on one of my other episodes, I'll show. I'm gonna bang this Lacoste one out again for the people that didn't see it. That that's just hectic, man. That's just crazy. Duke, man, thank you so much for being on the show. No, Joy, anytime, man. bro. Just, mate, you're, you're a unbelievable. Mate. You're a um, just get into the pizza. Everyone. Old. Everyone for listening in and uh, support, yes, man, support, support his show, man. He's doing a good thing for everyone. And Thank I suppose you. there's not many people around that's doing shit like this, you know. So it shows a bit of a a culture and inside scoop. And if it's people, not, we're not out here to say, hey, we this and we that. Just saying, this it's is just what this we is do. this is it. Yeah, is no one's done do. it. Yeah, that's it. You know. And what's the address if people want to come and get some good paint? It's uh. 1075 Endeavour Way, but dudes can hit me up on IG anyway. And you do deliver, yeah. Yeah, they can just hit me up anyway. They're welcome to come down if they need paint. No worries, man. Yeah, support. I'll go downstairs, people. Maybe show, did you show, show the Harry? I'll show the Harry again. This actually lights up. What the, yeah, when it's on the proper train. When it's on the proper train track, that actually goes. That's like, that's mad. All right, I'll go downstairs and do a quick more, a quick tour, and then um, we've got the loop. He also sells uh, loop gear as well. Is loop? Would you say loop's the top seller now? Yeah, for loops, you. Loop's up there, man. It's yeah. Pretty much selling the fucking. Well, it's pretty. It's pretty. Yeah, it's selling shitloads, man. I gotta show that train sign again, man. Just do a couple of twists. This is off an original. Uh, New York subway car. car. Yeah, New York subway car. Obviously, it's at the front right here, like shown on this. It's the, yeah, so it's the model right so there. It shows all the destinations where the train used to run. It's mad. 59th Street, Pelham Bay Park. So, yeah, man, it was about 30. So it, was really, uh, it was from, the, I think, the IRT line, so. Sick. Brooklyn. Yeah, man, there's, there's, there's fucking heaps of them. Got the boys in the back there. So, yeah. And then, obviously, yeah. we showed this last time, but... Yeah. Little, Still got spray like on it. a box car from the 70s of a New York subway car. A little bit a of number. spritz on there, yeah, too. Yeah, still got, like, a bit of a Original of someone's throw-up. That would be old. Man, fuck knows how old that paint. It's back. <laughs> would it's be still, now how many years old now? Like, like yeah. <laughs> and this is an inside map. Someone's put their throw up there. They're from the seventies. It's amazing. We got a uh, we got yeah, a that... boyfriend and girlfriend probably coming home from school there, tagging up with the with the borrows. And here's all the cans. I'll show you also. A bit of range there. Before we before we head out, so obviously you can see all the range. And yes. Paint. There's not much to see at the moment, but it's a bit of a mess. But just yeah. to give you a bit of an idea. Here's the magic. There you go. Still got to sort shit out, but... Oh, Most of it's there. There, upstairs. There you go. Doesn't oh. stop. Paint all up there as well in the mezzanine. No worries. That's mad. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. On show 10, I've got to thank Duke as well. My man Frankie's come as well. Oh, wait, it's on the other way. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much, man, episode 10. That's why I had to have, I had to have the Godfather, man. Love, he's kicking some knowledge, showing some garments, sneakers, and uh, just sharing some history about uh, West Side. just the Western suburbs graffiti, you know what I'm saying? And just like and how it was back in the days and, and how he's all started basically mm. really you know yeah for sure so thank you very much sorry about the first bit that cut out but hopefully this one's all good and uh thank you very much and have a great weekend and be safe and now